Hello, my name is Mark Stebbings of HTG Trading, and in this video we will be covering the most common faults found on Scotsman Ice Machines. In this video we'll be covering areas of preventing issues found on installation, operator errors, some common electrical faults, and some common mechanical faults. So the correct services for an ice machine should be within one meter of the machine's final location and include a suitably rated electrical supply, a waste which is trapped and vented up stand to prevent foul smell and terminated with a spillover fitting in line with the N17, giving a suitable air break. If waste is a problem getting away from the ice machine, you may need to make an inclusion of a condensate pump as part of the installation process. The water supply should be a potable mains type and be terminated with a washing machine style stop valve to allow easy access for the hoses to connect to. And as part of an installation, we do always recommend that a water filtration product is included as part of the installation itself. Take a note though that the fittings on the head fitting should actually have PTFE tape actually wrapped around the small end before being inserted into the head to prevent leaks. So to connect the ice machine to the provided services at the final location, the hoses would be removed from the machine itself. The waste hose being a standard 20 mil corrugated flexible hose provided with two clips. Our preference is to suggest the Jubilee clip because once actually installed onto the back of the machine, the clip can then be done up nice and tight to prevent leaks. The water hose is a RAS approved food grade hose and inside the end there is a little rubber washer that needs to be ensured it's in its final location before you mount the hose into the back of the machine. In both cases ensure the hoses are tight before the machine is moved back into its final location as part of this, you need to ensure that the hoses do not become kinked to prevent water from entering the machine or wastewater getting away from the machine. The electrical supply is terminated with either a 13 amp plug or a suitable isolator where it's hardwired. Also remember, when installing an ice machine, it does need to be level. Whether it be side to side or front to back, you can adjust the feet accordingly to ensure this happens. Once installed and on site, please ensure that no heavy objects are placed on top of the ice machine which could actually dent the top panel and prevent a door from opening. It's especially important for projects where ice machines have been left in situation for many, many days before a site goes live. So, after the connections have been made to the rear of the machine and prior to turning the services on, we need to ensure the inside components are in the correct location. Namely, the spray plate needs to be located tightly in its final lo location and not wobble. This will prevent water spraying into the evaporator section. The curtain needs to be mounted the right way round and actually hang in front of the evaporator chamber so to prevent water loss. We also need to ensure that the spring cap and the sump bung are both in the correct location and prior to the machine being turned on to prevent loss of water. As part of the security check, we also need to ensure the components inside the refrigeration section of the unit are secure. So, remove the air filter and the two fixing screws. And once inside, we can now check to make sure that components such as the fan motor are mounted securely on their bracket and that the fan motor does not catch when rotated. The compressor needs to be secure on its mounts and so it doesn't actually hit the side of the actual unit and cause vibration. We need to also ensure that no other tubes or fittings have actually been caught as part of the assembly process. On the front of the machine, you'll also notice now that the Scotsman units are now fitted with an X-Safe, a standard. This is a clean air system, which will take air and 
purify it to the point inside the evaporator and the evaporator sections and the ice making area so to prevent mold and bacteria buildup. As an attending engineer to a service call on an ice machine that's reported as not working, it might be worth checking some common operator faults which occur when the unit has been placed back together incorrectly. This before starting to take panels off to other areas of the machine. Another area for common operator errors includes the machine not being put back together again correctly following a routine maintenance by the operators themselves, which includes areas such as a spray curtain not being correctly mounted and being allowed to wobble, which prevents water from blowing up into the evaporator section. The curtain being misplaced the wrong way round and being incorrectly inserted, which can lead to a shortage of water. Also, the sump cap spring not being put back on in the correct manner and may have been knocked off by an ice scoop when retrieving ice itself. Another area which can result in a service call to a non-working ice maker is a lack of routine cleaning or maintenance, especially after dormant periods of inactivity. Okay. Ice is classified as a food product and as such the equipment that makes it should be cleaned on a regular basis. Failure to do so could lead to ice quality issues and in extreme cases stop the machine from working. Regular cleaning to remove slime, grime and bacteria such as this should be carried out very, very regularly. Okay. Regular removal of the air filter is essential to prevent any dust and debris building up which could lead to high temperature alarms and also means the machine will work more efficiently. Although not a direct failing of an ice machine in preventing it from making ice itself, one area that can, an operator can cause a problem is by heavy objects being placed on top of an ice machine, which in turn dents the top panel, which in turn does not allow the door to open correctly. Operators on site will more than likely force the door open, which could damage the runners or the rollers or indeed the lining of the actual top panel itself. Another area of operator failure is the aggressive use of an ice scoop when retrieving ice from the storage bin. The wrong type of scoop could be used, indeed which causes then possible problems with cracking the bottom of the storage bin, the slicing off of the drain fitting, or indeed the knocking off of the sump cap, which in turn loses the water from the sump chamber and stops the machine from working. You are reminded as an engineer attending a service call that should you remove the panels off a working ice machine, there is electric and water present along with high temperature and moving parts. In this section, we will look to explain what the LEDs mean on the front of the PCB controller through function or failure. When a unit is turned on at the mains, a green LED will show on the PCB. This is followed five minutes later, after a water fill cycle, by a yellow freeze light. This indicates normal operation. It is possible that if a PCB has been changed on an ice machine and the jumper has been incorrectly installed, your yellow freeze light will actually begin to flash. This indicates a 60 minute delay and will need to be checked. A single yellow LED indicating bin full means the ice machine is now full of ice inside the storage bin. If that yellow bin full light begins to flash, it has two status. If it's flashing slow, it's indicating the machine will move into a bin full shortly. If it flashes fast, it's indicating the machine is coming off a bin full and will resume freeze shortly. A single red LED showing as steady would indicate a high condensing temperature. This could mean you have a fan motor failure. It could also mean there is airflow problems going into the unit, whether it be by the grills being blocked on the side or the front, or the air filter itself is blocked with dust and debris. You may have a refrigeration issue on the discharge side. You also could have a high temperature in the room, the ambient condition being higher than the machine can permit normal usage. It is possible also for the red LED to flash three times and repeat. This would indicate a low ambient temperature condition around the machine's location. A single red LED flashing would indicate too high evaporating temperature. 
and is brought on by the unit not able to come down to zero degree from the start of the freezing cycle within 15 minutes. This could be down to a water inlet valve leaking by, a hot gas valve leaking by, or something as simple as the evaporator sensor becoming detached on the top of the evaporator itself. A red alarm and yellow freeze LED showing together, steady, indicates a condenser sensor failure. The sensor itself will require to be changed. A red alarm and yellow freeze LEDs flashing together indicates the failure of the evaporator sensor. This sensor will now require to be changed and is mounted on the evaporator itself. A red alarm and yellow bin full LED alternating between each other indicates a bin sensor failure. The sensor mounted inside the bin will need to be changed. Should a PCB or ice level control need to be changed through failure, it is usual then to calibrate the two together to ensure correct operation. This is done before power is placed onto the unit by pressing and holding the reset button of the PCB board, turning the power on to the unit and awaiting the four LEDs to come on. Once the LEDs have been seen, take your finger off the button of the PCB. The machine should now move into a five minute fill cycle and resume operation. With the green light steady, the two yellows and the red flashing all together, this means the machine has been put into clean preparation mode and has normally occurred by the reset button of the PCB board being pushed between two and five seconds during the defrost cycle. The machine would then be activated and ready for cleaning in accordance with manufacturer's instructions. To reset the unit, turn the power off for 10 seconds before resuming power to the unit where the machine will pick up on its fill cycle and normal operation. For all Scotsman units that are installed with an internal condensate pump system known as PWD, the two yellow LEDs of the PCB that flash alternately would indicate a failure within the system. With the two yellow lights flashing on the front of the PCB and possibly with water sitting inside the storage bin, this is indicating potential failure with the pump waste system. The pump waste system at the rear of the machine collects water in the tank and once it reaches a desired level, will cross two pins, send a signal back to the PCB board to energize the drain pump. The tank will now be emptied of water through to waste. Should the water stay in the tank for a given period of time and a pump failure has occurred or a blockage has occurred within the drain off system, the system will be shut down through safety because the signal across the pins has exceeded six seconds. Before changing any parts on the unit itself, it would be wise to check the inside of the pump tank system by the removal of the lid and the cleaning of the necessary pins, and also ensuring that the drain off points to drain are not blocked with slime or bacteria. You also may need to check the integrity of the electrical component of the pump or the control. From 2020, the majority of Scotsman ice machines have now been fitted with the XSafe system. The module mounted inside the machine offers 24 hour UV sanitation, clean air through a series of tubes that go over, blow air over the evaporator section and into the storage bin area. The UV bulb that's inside the unit needs to be changed on an annual basis and there is a status light on the side of the module which indicates the current position. This section relates to the more common mechanical failures found on Scotsman ice making equipment. On attending a service call to an ice machine that is reported as not making ice, one area to check and assuming that you have an adequate water supply to the unit is the water level inside the sump chamber. If the water level is at a low ebb, you will find possibly that you have a loss of water via a drain valve leaking by or a sump cap that may have been knocked off by sight who are retrieving ice aggressively from the storage bin itself. If the water level inside the sump chamber is at a higher level as expected, your problem may relate to a failing pump which would normally pump the water through the spray jets and into the evaporator section itself. This would need checking and replacing as required. Attending a service call to noise that's come from the refrigeration section of the machine could relate to the fan motor itself where it's become possibly detached from its bracket, the fan blade could have become loose, or indeed the noise from the motor could be the bearings, which in case could be the motor failing and it requires replacement. Also consider 
that a non-working fan motor could also bring on a single red LED high condensing temperature light as measured by the sensor mounted in the condenser. Attending to an ice machine service call where there are no obvious signs of electrical or mechanical failure, the issue may relate to poor ice production within the unit itself. This could be, and providing you have an adequate water supply to the unit and the water filtration product is not blocked, it may be down to cleanliness within the ice machine itself and whether the unit has been regularly cleaned. Alternatively, the ice quality could be a result of settings that may need to be adjusted via the PCB board where you can find in the service manual accordingly. The perfect Scotsman Supercube should be clear and full in shape and allow you to put the top of your thumb into the little concave area within.